I'm sure you heard this before. Do 1 to 5 reps for maximal strength, do 8 to 12 reps for optimal or top end muscle growth, and everything above 20 reps, that's just cardio that doesn't build any muscle. But if you think critically about this, why do elite CrossFit athletes, right, the, the elites of the elites, why are they so muscular then? Certainly the girls, in my opinion. Because, okay, they do quite a bit of strength, like typical strength work, but also most of their training volume is going to be very high reps, mid to low weights. Why do they build so much muscle then? And in this video, I will break down a very interesting and very new study that exactly investigated that. What happens if an athlete trains one body part, let's say the left side, uh, high reps, low weight, low weight on the bar, and the other body part, vice versa, high weights, low reps. What happens to strength as well as muscle hypertrophy? And if you stick until the end, I will show you one variable that you should focus on instead of these rep ranges if your goal is long-term muscle growth. All right, excited for this one? Let's go straight into it. Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. My name is Gomar, I'm a senior scientist at ETH Zurich based in Switzerland. And for the last decade or so I studied and taught different aspects of exercise physiology and my goal now is to bring some of that science that I learned back to you guys. So in 1957, so quite some time ago, Dr. Elwood Henneman came up with the size principle. And the size principle is a super important paradigm in strength training, but also in endurance training and often overlooked by most coaches and, and athletes overall. Think about it. Let's say you want to pump up this floating boat that floats on the river, right? And instead of one valve, you have hypothetically 10 valves, all right? So you can pump with 10 pumps simultaneously this, this boat. And there's basically two options to pump up the boat, right? Once one option would be you have all 10 pumps and simultaneously you pump slowly with let's say 10 people to pump up the boat. That's one possibility. Another possibility is that you only use three pumps, only three out of, out of 10, and those you pump really hard and the rest you just leave, you, you, don't, you don't touch. That is basically how the muscle works. Because Dr. Henneman, as I said, in 1957 already, discovered that molar units are recruited from the smallest or the lowest threshold towards the highest thresholds. So basically what that means is if you want to contract your muscle very slowly, then only the slow twitch muscle fibers, basically the slow twitch muscle fibers, the low threshold motor units, so the, the alpha neurons that innervate each muscle fiber are uh, recruited. Okay, but when I pick up something more, let's say something heavier, it's a little bit heavier, uh, more higher threshold muscle fibers are recruited. And when I'm doing my 1RM back squat or my 1RM bicep curl, all of a sudden, in one go, in one split second, all motor units will be recruited. The slow twitch or the, the lower threshold, the mid threshold, and also the high threshold. And that is basically where this whole paradigm comes from that I alluded to in the introduction, where if you want to build strength, you want to recruit all the muscle fibers. You want to uh, fire up all the, the, the high threshold motor units. So you build that strength, not only, let's say, more muscle mass, but also neuromuscular. You're, you have more capacity to contract your muscle and you produce or you can exert more force uh, with, with that specific muscle. And then when you go into a little bit higher rep ranges, the typical hypertrophy rep ranges, 6 to 12 reps, there is sufficient force production to recruit all the large motor units and you also fatigue them because you do multiple reps. You don't do one or two reps, you do high amount of reps or relatively high amount of reps, uh, 5 to 6 to even 12, right? So from there, it kind of makes sense if you think about it. But then, and that's the whole point about, about this whole story, let's say, if you do very high reps, 25 reps, 30 reps even, the whole idea was, back in the 50s, 60s, and 70s, where, where this uh, repetition continuum uh, came from, was that um, because the force that you need to apply is not high enough, you won't, you won't recruit the high threshold muscle fibers. So uh, in that case, your 
type 2 muscle fibers, your fast twitch muscle fibers will not be, let's say, recruited and will not uh, adapt to the training stimulus, so will not hypertrophy. That is somewhere understandable if you think about the size principle and if you then theoretically uh, explain these different uh, rep ranges. But is this actually true? Because, as I said, with these new sports that are popping up, like CrossFit, High Rocks, you see uh, things that, that, that are uh, not really making sense in line of this repetition continuum, because you see very, very muscular and, and let's say, heavy-sized uh, athletes by doing a lot of cardiovascular uh, training, let's say, right, like a lot of erg work, and combining that with low to mid-tier um, weights and very, very high rep ranges, sometimes in, in 10 minutes, 100 reps, or, or even in 5 minutes, uh, 100 reps, right? So, which is kind of different than typical uh, strength training. So, I was thinking, okay, is there any data about this? Is this actually uh, investigated? And yes, there is. I mean, there have been uh, more and more researchers uh, thinking about this uh, paradigm. And a very good, very recent study, I think from two months ago, is coming from the group of Stuart uh, Phillips. It's a Canadian researcher. And if you're interested in muscle metabolism, uh, in, in strength, hypertrophy, definitely look up his research. He's one of the most cited researchers in muscle hypertrophy in this whole uh, paradigm. So the title of this study is Resistance Training Load. So load here means the weight on the bar. That's important to, to, to think about. Does not determine resistance training induced hypertrophy across upper, upper and lower limbs in healthy young males. So what did they do? A very straightforward and simple uh, protocol. They had 20 healthy uh, young males, untrained, relatively untrained, and they went always to failure via two different paradigms. One part of the body, they did bicep curls and leg extension. So that's the only thing they did, all right? Bicep curls, leg extension, let's say with the left side. They did low uh, load, but very high reps. So they did 20 to 25 reps at 30 to 40% of your 1RM. I, and I don't know if you've ever done that, but that's very hard. It's not fun to be a volunteer that, that is placed in that group. But anyway, very low load and high reps, all right? And I said dumbbell preacher curl and knee extensions. And then the high load group did the opposite, right? They also did 10 weeks of training, they did their typical 8 to 12 reps at 70 to 80% of your 1RM, so very typical in this hypertrophy uh, range, knee extension and dumbbell preacher curls. Importantly, the total training load, it's a bit confusing, so in, in my, in my uh, mind, load means the amount of reps times the weight, so the total tonnage they actually uh, loaded was the same. Okay, that's very important always when you, when you look at it. So it's a well-designed study. And what did they find? Basically, they looked at muscle hypertrophy via, I think, four different ways or three different ways, via DEXA scan, via uh, ultrasonography, and via muscle biopsies to actually measure the, the cross-sectional area. And basically, what they found is no differences between the group. Here in white is going to be the, the HL, the high load group. They, they gained uh, a certain amount of um, muscle mass, so B, uh, FB, FM is a fat and bone-free uh, muscle mass measured by uh, via DEXA scan. So they gained in their legs around 400 grams and in their arms, whatever, 200 to 300 uh, grams of pure muscle. Okay, and this was di the same in white between the high load versus the low load. That's a, the most important conclusion of that study. And that's quite interesting because they also looked at, obviously, uh, strength parameters. And they ranked the, the, the gains in strength, so from the lowest responder to the highest responder, and they did the same with hypertrophy. And interestingly, at least in my opinion, that's maybe uh, a meat for another video, there was no correlation. You would think that the people who gained the most muscle mass would also gain uh, the most strength and vice versa. No, zero correlation. Okay, so this means that a lot of the strength adaptations in these, these guys was indeed via neuromuscular adaptations, not necessarily the correlation with cross-sectional area or getting bigger and thicker uh, muscles. Interesting uh, to see. So then obviously the, the, the question comes, what about strength cover? Like, like is, 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 I mean, Yes, maybe hypertrophy because uh, you do actually recruit uh, also the, 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 uh, the higher threshold fibers with, with low with low weight uh, training and high rep training. I will get to that in a second. What about strength, you are right? You, you need to fire up all those high load and, and high capacity muscle fibers. And here I have to go back to, uh, to previous research from Morton and from Mitchell et al. And here uh, they did basically the similar uh, training studies where they had two groups in this case that trained at 30% of their 1RM or 
percent of their one RM, and then uh, yeah, obviously the the reps were different, and you see almost uh, the the same that indeed strength was marginally better here in bench press as well as in uh, squat strength with untrained people, but really marginally with the high load. So maybe on the long term, and yes, certainly on. In, 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 in more trained uh, lifters. I do think that, yeah, the high load will, will benefit strength-specific strength adaptations, but th the effects are quite minimal. It's not that you cannot gain any strength when you do whatever, a CrossFit workout, uh, having a, a ton load of, uh, of, of reps, like, like whatever, 30, 40, 50 reps in, in a certain amount of minutes, right? So, yes, there might be some benefit of doing low reps if you want to gain a strength only but in that case also a hypertrophy will, will occur so it's really a blend it's not strictly oh you need to do five reps you need to do uh, eight reps for hypertrophy and everything above is cardio certainly that doesn't seem to be the case when you look at some of the the research that i'm uh, citing uh, that i'm citing here so if you want to link that to to functional fitness i mean Three weeks ago now, uh, two weeks ago, I was at the uh, World Fitness Project, so I saw some of the elite athletes uh, really from, from close up, and it really amazed me again how extremely muscular these specifically CrossFit athletes are. High Rocks is not, not, not really the case because they do way more typical cardiovascular uh, training, but CrossFit athletes have so much like pure muscle mass, uh, it's quite incredible uh, to see, and I... I, I, I really do believe that this is because the fact that they vary their rep ranges quite, quite dramatically. If you take, a, let's say, a typical power lifter, they will fluctuate in reps and weights a little bit. It goes maybe from 90% or even 100% to 70%, 75%. That will be their fluctuation of, uh, yeah, percentage of 1RM. But if you take a crossfitter, he will vary dramatically in rep ranges going from again also 100% 1RM doing a, a max 1RM uh, I don't know a back squat or front squat but also going super light like uh, Fran for ex sorry Fran yeah Fran but also Murph or, or other uh, workouts where they where they do uh, hundreds to thousands of, of, of reps body weight uh, reps with almost no weight and I do believe that this on the long term causes a lot of muscle hypertrophy so that is also how we think about structuring our training plans, as you might have noticed from before, this page or this channel doesn't have any external sponsors. So we try to keep this channel going with the services we bring to the community. And one of those services is uh, the training plans we built for both CrossFit athletes as well as High Rocks uh, athletes. And if you look at the typical strength week of a functional fitness athlete, in this case, uh, High Rocks, um, we would do two days of low reps, high weight, because there's some good research that shows that doing low reps and high weights is actually perceived less exhaustive as doing, as I already mentioned, 30 or 20 reps uh, until failure, okay? So, I mean, if you want to have the most bang for your buck and the best recovery, it's maybe better to do pretty low reps, five by five, four by four, um, instead of always doing super high reps, if the goal is to gain strength as well as muscle hypertrophy, which is important, in my opinion, for CrossFit as well as, uh, yeah, high rocks athletes in, in some cases. So, for example, here on Monday, let's say on Monday, you do four by four past front squats because it's really good for a fun, like uh, structural strength and also it transfers well to wall balls, um, to Olympic weightlifting and so on. Then you do more uh, hypertrophic uh, stimulus, let's say three times 10 forward uh, lunges, but only five steps per, per leg. So that's actually uh, pretty low uh, reps, uh, and then also you do Romanian deadlifts at 65%. This is just arbitrary numbers, obviously. Then the next day, let's say Wednesday, you could do uh, upper body reps, where you do uh, low reps, again, high load, uh, weighted pull-ups, bent over row, banded push-ups, very typical compound movements that are always programmed into uh, our programs. And then, because you want to you want to train each muscle group, if possible, like strength-wise, at least twice a week, right? That's the best. I mean, yes, you can do more, but there will be diminished uh, returns in that case. So then one other day, we would do lower and upper body uh, strength, where you do high reps and low load. And that could be, for example, a CrossFit workout. Think about it. 2159 of strict pull-ups and wall walks. 
you think this is uh, building cardiovascular capacity or do you build, think it builds strength and muscle hypertrophy, specifically muscle hypertrophy? I would go for the latter, even though it's a CrossFit workout, it's a very hypertrophic stimulus uh, by nature. So that's maybe something that you can uh, think about in your own uh, training as well. And then, for example, you can do 120 wall balls for time and each time uh, you break, you whatever, do some kind of a penalty like burpees or, or whatever, right? So you make, it, you make it fun. So you do very high reps, but pretty low weight but you don't do whatever uh, 30 squats uh, for time or 30 uh, back squats at 30 percent i mean no one wants to do that uh, that's that's not really i think a very good uh, training program maybe it's a good training uh, theoretically but practically it's basically uh, not not feasible so as i said i also wanted to give you like a, a variable that you should rather focus on if your goal is to maximize muscle hypertrophy, in this case specifically muscle hypertrophy, and that would definitely be you want to recruit the maximal amount of motor units. So it doesn't really matter in which rep range that is. You want to do, you can do three reps, five times three reps or eight times three reps, or you can do, as I said, very high reps. It doesn't really matter because, and that's maybe something I didn't really explain yet, is that if you um, do these high reps at pretty low weight, whatever, 50% of your 1RM and you do 30, 30 reps, yes, initially, you will definitely only recruit the, the low threshold as well as the, the mid threshold um, motor units. But once they get fatigued, and they will get fatigued after 15 to 20 reps or 18 reps, then the muscle shifts over towards the higher or the, 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 the central nervous system shifts over towards the higher threshold reps. And also those will get fatigued and you will feel very exhausted uh, if you at least go to failure. So that's maybe the key part that uh, the Russians and, and the Soviet guys uh, forgot in their hypertrophy continuum. If you go to failure, even at medium weights, or even light weights, 300 squats, for example, you will recruit the high threshold muscle fibers, mostly the type two muscle fibers, and they will adapt to the training stimulus. If you quite logically want to go to the other end and you want to build muscular endurance, obviously that will be a completely different ballpark, different uh, video, but there you want to uh, recruit the lower threshold muscle fibers by doing a lot of cardiovascular volume, zone two volume, but even some, some threshold work or some erg work where the, in, the, where the instant power, where the instant force that has to be developed by the, the muscle is not that high. That's very important. And as a sidekick, that's why CrossFit workouts are also so hypertrophic in nature, because the instant power that you always have to uh, generate to pick up even me medium weights at high velocities is just recruiting the high threshold muscle fibers. All right. So I hope this uh, gives you some perspectives uh, on, on how to train related to the, the rep ranges and the hypertrophy uh, spectrum. I will link uh, the study uh, and some of the studies I talked about in the description below. If you're interested in training with us, joining the training community, I will do uh, every second Wednesday, yes, every second Wednesday of the month, I will do a live Q&A with only the members in our training plan. So if you're interested in getting super fit and also want to learn uh, a thing or two, ask me direct questions, scan the QR code that is popping up right now just jump into the seven day uh, free trial i don't think you will uh, regret it all right that was it from my part today if you got some value out of this video out of my my thoughts that i had related to the, the size principle don't hesitate to like the video and also subscribe to the channel my goal is to get to 40,000 subscribers and it is on the right path so thank you for that if you already have subscribed otherwise just go and click that button if you want to learn more about fitness health training, nutrition, all the good stuff. Just click the video that is recommended by Mr. YouTube itself right now. Thank you so much for listening and see you in the next one. Ciao.